Want to use Trello for your game dev project? You want to be more organized and efficient? Well, stick around, I'll show you how. Hey guys, Adam here from Pixel Mystic. I've been a game designer and producer for years, so I can't stress enough how important it is to keep track of your task and ensure that you have good project management when you're doing a game project. Think about it, game development is really complex and if you don't manage your scope accordingly, you'll never be able to ship your game on time. That would lead to further delays, more resources down the drain, and even more loss of motivation, which a lot of times will lead you to eventually cancel your project. So whether you're an indie developer who's working on this full-time, or if you're doing this part-time as a hobby or as a side project, if you want to see your game finished, you need to manage your time and your tasks more efficiently. This tutorial that I'm about to share with you is meant for solo developers. So if you are looking for ways to manage your team or team-based projects, you should check out my other video right here. You should also check out my Trello course on Udemy. There's a link in the description below that already has a special discount applied. All right, first things first, you need to get yourself an account at trello.com. It's free. And then you'll go to either a new board or a current board that you have set up. I'll use this one right here for this example. These are basic kind of um, activities that you do in Trello. So I won't go into details explaining them. So if you want a beginner's guide though, do let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll consider making a video sometime in the future. Now, the first thing you gotta do is to set up lists. And I would recommend these four lists at the minimum to be set up. A backlog, a to-do, in progress, and done. So the way I set up this board for game development is to understand the status of tasks. So these lists represents a status. If you don't know, you can just create a list by clicking this button here. You can key in the title and just click add list. You can also move the list around to rearrange them. That's how flexible Trello is. Okay, now that you have these lists set up, you're gonna need to start creating cards. And these cards represent tasks that you have to do for your game development project. The cards will reside within lists so lists are like containers to, well, literally list down the different cards that uh, you'll be working with. For example, I already created a bunch of cards here that represents this imaginary project that I have going on. To create a card, you can go to any one of the lists and click on add another card. Key in the title. and just like that, the card will be created. You can then click on a pencil icon to add more information or click on the card itself and it'll bring up a whole menu where you can have more details to be included in this card. What you wanna do is to make sure that you list down every task that you can think of as much as possible. And this is similar to when you have new ideas or new tasks. Don't waste your brain capacity and your willpower on memorizing tasks. In fact, don't even write them down on a piece of paper because you're going to lose that piece of paper if you're not an organized person. What I recommend is to make this a habit, list down the tasks in the form of cards. Even if you don't have it properly structured in terms of the wording and how you describe things, that's completely fine. Type it down in point form, type it down as simple as possible just to quickly get it out of your system and into Trello. You can always add more details later on and organize your cards later on. Okay, now that we have our list set up and we have a bunch of cards already created, 
we're going to utilize one of Trello's most powerful and flexible features. And that's the labels. Labels are like tags. So these colorful, uh, well, labels <laughs> on each card, they act as a way to categorize your cards and it allows you to filter out cards based on a label that you select. So you're able to sort through all this information very easily. So for example, I would recommend in this particular example that we're going through that you base your labels on particular uh, task type. So if I click on this label right now, it'll, uh, it will reveal in text form the actual label. I've got game design here, programming, modeling, animation, just as an example of the different types of tasks that I'll do as this game development project goes on. So in case you're wondering, um, if you want to create a label, go right here on the site menu, click on more and go to labels. You can choose a color and then click on the pencil icon to edit and name the label accordingly. And then if you want to apply the label, you can go to a card, click on a pencil icon, click edit labels, and you can assign multiple labels if you want to, but usually you just put one label at a time. You may have your own reasons to put more than one label, but in this example, I'm just going to use one. Okay. You can also click on a card and you can add the labels by clicking on this side menu right here or by clicking this plus button. And then when it comes to sorting out and filtering labels to actually utilize the function of labels, hit to the menu, click on filter cards, and then you can click on whichever labels you want to focus on. So when I click on modeling, as you can see, it filters out everything else except modeling. I can also combine the labels. I want to select both modeling and animation. It will show both. You can deselect and it will go away and it will show everything else if you don't filter any cards. So it may not seem important right now, but later on when you have so many cards, so many tasks, being listed down, especially as you go on about your project and you have new ideas and you have new tasks coming up, they'll start piling up and then you're going to have a lot of chaotic moments trying to find and filter through some of those cards that you're desperately looking for, for information. And just like that, we have set up a basic Trello board suitable for game development. But to get more value out of this, I'm going to share with you a workflow you can use to keep track of the progress and identify areas that requires more improvements or attention. This workflow borrows some elements from the Agile methodology. You may have heard of it being mentioned here and there in the gaming industry. Basically, it allows you to deliver progress of your project or your game in smaller chunks that is good enough to be reviewed or test it. So Agile is a huge topic, so I won't be covering it fully in this video, but do let me know in the comments section below if it's a topic that you're really interested in. I might look at it in the future and create more videos for it. Now back to our workflow, we'll need to first start with defining what kind of features or goals that we want to have done within a certain time frame, typically within one to two weeks. It's really up to you to decide on the time frame, but usually it's much better to stick to one or two weeks just to make it more manageable and giving you enough time to adjust as the weeks go on. So this time frame is called a sprint. So our sprint is two weeks for this example. When we now look at the list of features and goals that we want to accomplish within one sprint, what are the tasks that will need to be executed in order for us to reach those goals and build those features. 
Okay, so to illustrate an example of this workflow, let's hop back on to Trello. And imagine this is the first day of the sprint and you're planning kind of things to do for the sprint. So after you have your list of objectives, goals or features you want to build, and since your sprint is two weeks, you kind of made a decision to prioritize doing this, maybe doing this, doing this, and just this. Then as time goes by, you will need to update your cards as you move them to in progress. So that means that you're working on a task. And then when you're done, well, move them to done to indicate that you've completed one task. You can be working on multiple tasks at once. Just make sure that you indicate that they're in progress. And then when you're done, make sure that you put them to done. Now imagine it's the last day of the sprint and this is what it looks like. You managed to finish three tasks and you have one left to do. You'll now need to stop what you're doing and review whatever you have built so far. Test out the features if needed and just have a look at your work in progress so far. And then the next sprint starts all over again. You can either archive this entire list by clicking this icon right here and clicking on archive list and you can create a new done list. If you need to refer back to the task that has been done, don't worry, you can go back to the menu, click on more and then click on archive, switch to list, you can send it back to the board. So they're not gone forever unless you delete them. I'm just going to get rid of it again. So now imagine that we're in a new sprint and the first thing you want to do is to be aware of the tasks that you did not manage to finish. Understand why you did not manage to meet your deadline. And then if there's a problem that you have to address, maybe it's a process issue that you need to work on. Maybe you need to buy a new tool to help you progress, etc, etc. With that out of the way, you will now need to once again define your goals for this new sprint and then pick the tasks that will help you achieve those goals. Let's say in this new sprint, I'll need to do these tasks in order to accomplish all the goals. And just like that, the cycle repeats itself. You'll keep putting things in progress as you work on them and then move them to done as they are completed. So as I mentioned before, you'll get better and better at you know, estimating the amount of effort required to finish certain tasks. And you can also consider the fact that you will eventually get better and better at the skill set point of view anyway. So you get better at certain skills like, you know, doing more animations, maybe you're more efficient at doing all your Photoshop tasks. You might improve in your coding and how fast you can create things. That is also another factor and you get to measure that if you follow this workflow. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Remember, if you want to work in Teams using Trello, you should check out my other video right here. You should also check out my Trello course on Udemy. At the time of this recording, I have more than 2,000 students already enrolled to my course. And it's got lots of positive reviews. So if you're interested, there's a limited time discount and you can get that by clicking on the link in the description below. So get it now. Trust me, for the price that you're paying, it's totally worth your money. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. It is due to their generosity that I'm able to keep doing videos like this one. They are also supporting me on my game project called What The Hex. You can check it out right here. I upload dev vlogs regularly on this channel, so do hit subscribe if you want to see more. Once again, thanks for watching. Take care. Have a nice day.